All right. So, okay. So, yeah. So, I just made these three spheres right here. Um, let's put some materials on them. So, to make your material, let me delete this. Mm, you new guys, I got to look and see. Oh, no. I think you all know how to make it. I just got to... Um, I forget how to do it in the new version. But on this one, we can just do a create, we can do new default material, or we can just double click in the bottom area right here. And so I'm just gonna take this right here and I'm gonna drag it onto here. But first thing I'm gonna do is if I double click on this material, it can it shows up in two different locations. So we can have this floating window, which I kind of like better because I can just go through and click, or you can click on it and it's over here too. So it's the same thing. So let me just show you. Um, name. Well, oh yeah, this right here. So the name material, this right here. And this is layer. Don't worry about that. So I'm just going to name it ground. For this one. And then I will, um, yeah, if you look at color, we click on color, it's right here. And so this right here controls the color of the object, but um, let's leave the grid. Well, you know, let's make the grid like a little bit brownish, let's say. So I'll click right here, or a little tan, I should say. Cool. And let's do this with one of these spheres. So I'll click on this and I'll just name it, uh, I don't know, shiny. And I'll take this, and there's two ways to apply it. I can take this and drag it onto this sphere, Control Z to go backwards, or press the arrow, but I like Control Z. Or I can select the object. So I'll go to this, uh, this um, model mode, click on it. So you see it's highlighted. And then I can go to the material, and I can right click, and I can just go to apply, and it'll apply it there. So if I double click, our material palette comes up. Like I said, basic is um this right here, this checkbox. So it's saying color, luminance, and we'll go through all of these. But what's checked here is checked there, as you can see. It's checked here, it's checked there. So the first one we'll go to is color. And for this one, let's make it a... Uh, I don't know, reddish or purplish, pinkish. So this right here controls the color. The brightness, if you take this down, it just adds black to whatever this color is that you've chosen. So just so you know that, um, you know what hue, saturation, and value means. And all these up here, these are just different ways on uh, choosing colors. So we have this color wheel kind of looking thing over here, which is kind of cool. Um, and then it gives like the complementary color. I think it says it. Yeah, complementary. Ooh, got that off a of break. It's for memory. All right. And then, you know, it shows whatever the color is the opposite or the colors that match correctly. I like this purple color. Um, and then we have just basically it's just different uh, ways to choose this like Photoshop sort of. Um, this one never really chosen RGB, use saturation value, Kelvin scale. So this is temperature. Um, so it's going from cool to warm. And some other ones that I'll be honest, I don't really use. What's this Pantone colors, maybe? I don't know. Like I said, I like my uh, my purple. All right, and we have right here uh, textures. So if I wanted to put a, um, let's say a picture in here or anything like that, I can just go over here and I can put it in. Let's see if I have a, JPEG somewhere. Yeah, so this will put a photo on top of that. 
kind of just like we did for cereal box in the box. If you want to get rid of that, you um, reset the default. And then you also have this pull down right here so we can choose uh, some other options. Oh, and this is like a preset or whatever. So we do Galaxy. And you can just go through these and uh, kind of play with these to see if you can get something you like. So there's some also default material. So you can cheat and not, you know, actually use your own photo. So I'll right click, reset to default. All right. The rest of this, don't really worry about it so much, but you can go through play with this fall off. So it's just a light fall off. Meaning like you see how the light will wrap around the object or not wrap around the object. Right click, reset the default. Oh. Fusion, I don't really mess with that one too much. Luminance is uh, like a brightness. It makes it into like a light. You can't really see it too much now because uh, there's no lights in the scene. But when there are lights in the scene and we're using our render, then you'll be able to see like luminance. But it basically gives it a glow. Turn that off. Transparency makes glass objects, as you can see right here. And um, there's a refraction, which actually is uh, determined by this. So we can put glass, diamond, uh, milk. So it's just kind of showing you the uh, refraction values. And that's how like the light passes through the object. So depending on what we're making, you can uh, do this manually or go here. There's actually a scale online that says, uh, it's called IOR, index of refraction. And if you type in a material or, or like, let's say um, water IOR, it'll go in and it'll give you a um, specific number for this. And it's probably the same number that you look up online. So all the 3D programs have uh, index of refraction. This way the light goes in and bounces off, bounces around the object. Internal reflection, reflections, you can see what it's doing, reflecting the light internally and exit. So it's showing how the light's like kind of passing through. Fresnel re reflectivity, let's see what that's doing. A lot of these uh, settings, I kind of go through and um, just move the sliders and see what they do. Because um, yeah, it's kind of the best way to learn. So even if you don't really understand the technical like functions of it, just go through, move a slider, control Z, you see what it's doing. So you see when I uh, move this, the transparency is uh, going away. All right, so it's fully transparent now. Let's click on that. Then we have reflectance. So this is how um, the light reflects off object. So check this out. When an object is glossy, um, well, there's something called a specular and that's like the, the, the whitest part of the object. So right now the specular is kind of spread out. When an object is rough, the light hits it and it spreads across evenly. Like right now I'm looking at my wall and the light's hitting it and it's spreading across evenly. But if it was very gloss, you would have like a small specular hit. Let me show you what I mean. If I go over here to, well, actually I'm gonna change this to Beckman. So now we can really see the specular hit right here. So it's the brightest, whitest part. And if I go to roughness right here and I turn this down, Yeah, turn it down. We're seeing like that specular. It's uh, it's more defined. It's kind of like there's a fake light in Cinema 4D, and it's um, and it's showing us the reflection. The more of the reflection you'll see, the the smoother the object is. 
here's the specular strength, right? Oh, and you can see it in the viewport too. I was steady looking at this. So it's basically, think about it like car paint to, well, yeah, just glassy car paint to um, matte car paint. You don't see too many matte car paints, at least I don't. Sometimes people do it. So we can make it look shiny. And that's what we're going to do for this one. So it looks shiny. And we can do this with Beckman or the GGX function. Let's just keep it on this one because we're using it first. So remember, my goal is to make this one uh, shiny. So I can make it reflective, like um, mirror-like. I'm looking more for car paint-like. So basically, you just got to go through, move the sliders around, and try to get the look you want. But it'll really matter when we put the, uh, when we add the lights. And then we render it. So we'll be coming up next. Okay. Cancel this. All right. Um, and then we have layer for now, which um Sorry, I kind of slipped my mind. I forget. Uh, one of these is for metals. Well, I guess we just have to go through and see. I kind of, um, sorry, it's been a long time. I'm um, trying to remember what these stand for. Um, actually, just let me go look real quick. Conductor. Just to get it right. Is one of them supposed to be, I think, for metals specifically? And one's for, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just go back to this because I'm um, forgetting the, uh, the definitions. But yeah, just go back and forth. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So this one is conductor is for metals. And then uh, dielectric is for, um, for, um, liquids i think no but these asphalt's not liquid so let's just stick it to metals right and then we can have these different uh presets for values so like i said i wanted to make mine shiny so let's do um tungsten or silver Okay, cool. So this is going to be my shiny one. I'm just going to keep it like this. And now I'll make this one um, a kind of like a metal look. So go over here. Just type in metal. Just let me try steel. And for this one, I'll drag it onto the object. We'll select over here and I'll just adjust this one from this uh, from this attribute editor over here. So go over here and this time I'll do the GGX. Let's make this metal like so I'll give it like a gray kind of color. Reflectance. Go 
good reflection strength. So as y'all can see, it's starting to look metal-like. Higher I turn it up with the lower roughness, it turns into a mirror. But if I give it a little bit of roughness, now it's looking kind of like metal, like a brushed metal. And then specular strength, you can adjust that. So you can see this getting smaller or more blown out. Okay. Now we'll go over here to the layer for now. I prefer the floating window, just more than this, just showing you how to do it. Conductor. Now let's do like aluminum. Okay, nice. Now we have our steel ball. Now let's just make this one over here matte, which would be pretty much close to the default. Oh, look, it's called matte. Let's call it MA. Oh, thought that would add it on. So let's do MATTE. Go to color, let's choose this. And you know what I can do just to make it the opposite of that one? I'll go over here and choose that color and just choose something that's uh, complementary to it. Go over here to my reflectance. And let's keep it back at Beckman. Stick the specular strength down because we want this to be like paint, like wall paint, just nice and matte, no harsh reflections or anything. Now, if you get it all right right here, it's fine. I'm just, uh, you know, showing you how to do this with the Fresnel. But if you get the look that you want, that's all that really matters with this. So the, whatever way you hit the, the look, get the look correct the first way, go with that. So if it's looking okay, then we'll just deal with that. But it'll really come to life when we uh, do the lights in the next lesson. So I'm just moving this. Oh yeah. I'm gonna do a conductor. Eh, now nah, it's gonna make it look more metal-like. So I'll just leave that alone. Let's press none. And I'll just work it with these settings right here. So not a lot of reflection. I don't want any reflection really. Okay, nice. So take this, or remember, we'll just apply it. Right click, apply, cool. All right, so this is the introduction to materials. We have our three right here. And also, just so you know, 